Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about development of my sites. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how do you develop your own websites? Well, um, I'm, I'm going to assume here that you talk about when I build a website personally rather than how I do it at work because I think that's a very important distinction to make I've said this to a few developers before uh, you may think that you have a practically absolute freedom in building things the way you want and I'm very sorry to let you down here but that's not the case when you go into a place of work usually there is an established way of working and you need to adapt to that way of working and in many cases you can affect the way you do work and you might have a choice in tooling here and there and depending on the project you will have more say or less say but you will have to adjust you won't be able to do just whatever you want however if I'm building something myself it's uh, then well then anything goes so the, I can give you a concrete example of this actually where I have a friend who came to me and said that he wanted to he's also a developer he's actually one of my teammates uh, and we spoke and he said that he had these stakeholders that he knew since childhood who were looking to get a system built uh, a new system that or a platform for for uh, well basically project management uh, in a way in a sense uh, for different companies and so he said that it would be really cool if we could do that together and we could like do that in our free time and things like that and then I said yeah sure we can do that and he is a he is a very well he's a he's a pretty humble and you know, overall nice guy and so he said like do you have like how do you want to start like what tech would you suggest that we use and stuff like that because he he felt that it's probably best if I make these decisions which I, I was very flattered to do and I said well uh, if you're open to it we can just use my personal stack and you can see how you like it uh, and so he said okay so what is your personal stack when you do standard web development and I said well usually I use uh, for this sort of product it's uh, because the first thing we should think about is like what are the needs of the company and so we went through the needs and because we need to assert first and foremost if there's something in the requirements that they have that needs that requires to rethink because I mean sure it would be very easy for me to just say yeah we're just gonna use the thing that I usually use but if I say that before I know if there are any red flags or something else going on I, I might actually be um, we, we're we're doing it the wrong way we need to ask what the question the questions first and get the specifications before we choose the tooling and said and done my after a while uh, we got the specification from the stakeholders and then I told my friend and I said yeah uh, everything here seems pretty straightforward it's a standard web application so we don't have to make any special considerations here so what I suggest is that we start off by just using a node server with TypeScript and since the front end is a very dynamic and fairly liquid platform I think that we should use something like React uh, simply because I, I originally I said we could actually potentially just make this with a server, -rendered, uh, server -rendered side rendered solution and some vanilla JavaScript basically and in men in some cases we sure we could enrich certain widgets with react but we wouldn't have to go through the whole mile right uh, and we talked about it and we, we, we came to the conclusion that he feels more comfortable in react and there's not really a a strong reason not to use react apart from a few considerations so we might as well use it but we did at least consider using a, a even simpler solution to start off with but at the end of the day we decided that that would may have been too much of a risk and then I said uh, that's going to be the base stack and then you need to pick a CSS framework and he said okay uh, I have this CSS framework that I really like uh, I think it was called Bulma or something like that and I said yeah that's fine uh, you should think about the uh, the uh, support because I mean obviously something like bootstrap 
or foundation or one of the really really old and big and established ones with the stable solution and he goes yeah but I don't really look like the look and feel of those things okay that's fine you sh I mean there's no real problem with depending on uh, something different or I mean I told him we could use tailwind for all we like we could use that as well uh, that's fine uh, just as long as you find something that feels very simple for you it feels simple to use then it's fine and uh, the re and I said the reason why we're not building it from scratch is simple we don't have a designer and the requirements on this platform is fairly simple we don't need to build all of this from scratch it's going to be much faster for us to just use an off-the-shelf solution because we don't have any requirements on customization or anything like that and we don't have the ambition to do this we're basically just going to give them a product this is the thing do you like it and that's it and they don't they have no power practically whatsoever to influence anything about that they are not they're not allowed okay they they have no customization needs so no reason for us to make it uh, complicated for ourselves and then I said uh, and then he asked like what type of, what database should we use and I said well we need to think about that a little bit I would say uh, but the good part is that we don't need a database right now like, I mean the easiest thing easiest thing here would be to say that oh well, yeah, let's just use MongoDB and I usually for a lot of projects use Mongo uh, because for smaller projects projects where there's a lot of so without a lot of complicated relationships and things like that it's a very good database but I said let's just hold off with that because the thing is the first stuff that we need to do here is to create a proof of concept and that proof of concept is more is going to be practically all UI related and this is one of those things where an SBA really 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 shines because I told them uh, you have a f I have a project that like a template project that we can use to just set everything up that has all of the tools that you need uh, and then let's just not do the database right now and just have the server to serve up the content and then everything else be gets done on the client side because we can design the entire UI we can make all of the like the proof of concept features because we need to ship something small just to get the idea out, out, the, out the door this thing doesn't have to connect to a database or persist anything because we can save all of the application state on the client so that they can get a feel for how the experience is going to be and while they're doing that we can have a decision and a discussion and like think about the server and the back end and because now we can actually ship something that we're going to get feedback on quicker and paralyze work if we needed to and we we're, we're not in a risk position where we do more work than we need so that's exactly what we did uh, and I, th I think that this works really well you start with a UI uh, layer I always try to start with the UI first and then we used Redux to basically persist the entire front-end state so like you could add different tasks and move people around and you can see you can even quote-unquote seed the database by just adding some static users that you can add and like well, you can practically simulate the entire experience by just using the front, the client, and then we used Redux Persist so that the experience becomes really, really into like intuitive. So now, even if you refresh the page or you leave the page and come back, you're still going to have the state that you created last time, and that that really gets um, a, a normal user the same sort of sensation they would have gotten if we built the whole thing. And then I said, all right, so now that this is done. The first thing is, like, this is our first step, this is our first draft, our proof of concept. So let's not build anything more now. Let's push that to a very cheap solution such as Heroku or something where they have a free tier. It's not important that it's performant, that the URL and like all of this stuff is completely besides the point. What we now want is to get this thing on the internet and send that link to our stakeholders and let them play around with it and then we will get to gather feedback because after we've done this we're going to iterate a few times they're going to find new things and we will most likely be able to do most of the work that they suggest or the improvements without ever creating the server and then finally when they start saying things like oh now we would like to have user accounts we want to have uh, sessions and stuff like that that's when we start looking at how to use the database and then we can take it and have a more in-depth discussion about should we use a relational database or should we use Mongo or is there something else that's going to work for us so what I want you to take away from this is that my personal workflow is usually that 
my like the core or if I'm building a simple web application I practically always build it in node and TypeScript uh, with a front end which is either in React or it's server side rendered like the simplest thing possible uh, just keep it easy easy peasy I uh, usually create a I create the UI level first especially if I'm doing it in React which is very nice because then you can persist you can basically create the entire experience without having uh, having to create a database and a server and stuff like that and then you can ship that to as a proof of concept to your customer and let them play around with just the UI stuff and they will have a lot of feedback usually or some feedback and then you go okay cool I will take this feedback with me and now I'll implement like the server if that's even needed in some cases you might get away with just having the front end stuff right and then you like just host it on the simplest possible thing to start off with and then when the need requires it you level up and the rest of it is like using CSS frameworks is fine as long as you you know that there's not a lot of customization needs and things like that and yeah that's practically the way I go about it so the red thread to take away here is that uh, I have a set a set of tools that I know will do the job practically every single time and I adjust and fine-tune those choices based on the needs of my customer and if the customer really has the simplest needs in the po and simplest needs possible I always go as I like to say you go to war with the tools you know and then you ship the first thing and see how it goes that's usually how I do it have a great day